60 minutes, rewind. You know, I always used to say that being a comedian is a lot like being a hooker. I mean, it's humiliating and degrading, but it only lasts 20 minutes and you do get $100. Do you remember your first appearance on The Tonight Show? Oh, sure, sure, March uh, 7th, 1977. I mean, your first Tonight Show is kind of like your first girl, you know? I mean, it's real fast, it's over real quick, you weren't very good, but you never forget it. <laughs> but you do know you want to do it again. You know, I know I'll do better the next time. What goes through your mind when you look at it? What goes through your mind is you realize there's not one joke on there I would even tell today. Yet I told them in front of 30 million people. It's kind of like President Bush throwing up in Japan. Everybody saw it. You know, it's terrible. <laughs> Hardly anyone saw Leno in a handful of forgettable movies and television pilots. Producers raved about his talent, but Helen Kushnick, Leno's longtime manager, says he couldn't get his own TV series. He was too dark, he was too ethnic, he was too menacing. They actually did tell me that, that they thought he'd be frightening to children. <laughs> well, I remember one casting director said to me, well, you know, your jaw is too long. He said, what we need to do is break it and then rehang it. And I said, well, how long would that take? And he said, well, you probably wouldn't be able to talk for about a year. I said, a year! I get this cat out of my stomach. Jay and Mavis Nicholson, who used to be a comedy writer herself, have been married without children for 11 years. She says all those early rejections forced yeah, yeah, him into a new strategy. Too. After losing something that he came very close to getting, uh, again on the basis that they wanted somebody cuter, it then came back to us from various friends that they had a casting call out for this particular part. They were looking for a good-looking Jay Leno. And Jay said to me at that time, and this, I, I really admired him for this, he said, you know, they aren't going to let me in the front door. It's, I'm just going to have to take a little longer and come around the back. Coming around the back meant playing clubs and college campuses from Omaha to Orlando, shaking hands, signing autographs, even selling tickets. He was like a candidate running for office. He averaged 300 days a year on the road, and he got famous one town at a time. Hi, meet Santa Claus. Hello. And for a blue-collar kid from Andover, Massachusetts, he feels a little guilty living by his wit. I always sort of respected people who work with their hands. People that were sort of fast talkers were always kind of... People that talked for a living didn't really seem like they were really working to me. I mean, when I was out here once, I remember I, I went down on unemployment because I hadn't had a job in a long time. And I stood in line, and I got up to the thing, and the guy said, have you looked for work? And I said, well, I didn't work hard enough. I didn't look hard enough. Okay, you're right. You know, I ran out the door. I was so... I, I, I couldn't do it. I, I guess, no, I guess I didn't work hard enough. I'll come over here for an hour in the morning, an hour at night. And so Today, when Leno does relax, it's likely to be in his garage. He used to have a day job as a mechanic and has always loved cars. His interests and outlook may be blue collar. His collection of classic cars and motorcycles is not. It's his one indulgence. Most of my friends in Hollywood have one car and 20 or 30 girlfriends, and they're all broke. See, I have one woman and all these cars, and I have a lot of money. So it's actually, this is so much cheaper. <laughs> Cheaper, maybe, but not cheap. This 1931 Bentley, one of his latest acquisitions, cost a half a million dollars. He's the investigative reporter. He's the comedian. Together they fight crime on Croft and Leno tonight. At... This new job he got, host of The Tonight Show. Uh, what kind of a job is it? Hard job, easy job? Well, it's not a real hard job, I don't think. Uh, it's a, but it's a 24-hour day job. It's the kind of job I like. I get there at 2.30. We tape about 5.30, we finish at 6, 6.30, I'm home at 7. I fool around the garage for an hour, and then I come back in and I write some jokes. Fool around the garage for an hour, then I meet with the writers about midnight or so, work till about 4. And you only need four hours sleep? I sleep four hours, maybe five, but not much more than that. There's not a, a lot of lifting involved in this job, so one does not get tired particularly. Maybe not Jay Leno, but his friends and fellow comics Jim Brogan and Ron Richards certainly do. Beginning at midnight, sitting around Leno's kitchen table, they start going over the next night's monologue. They're working with a stack of 100 jokes written by Leno and a staff of writers he keeps around the country. Now, they're looking for the best 20. More economic news. Sears is laying off 7,000 employees. I don't know, I go to Sears all the time. Have you ever seen one employee in that place? I mean, it's... After deciding, Leno reads them in order into a tape recorder, working on the precise wording. There's never anybody working there. It's 4 a.m. by the time he gets to the joke about turning the 5 and 10 cent store into a 5 cent store. Leno's getting giddy. And even Wu 
Woolworths five and ten cent stores are scaling back. Yeah, <laughs> because of the recession, <laughs> no more high to get items. No All the ten cent stuff is gone. That's <laughs> funny. How about you? Yeah, nothing over a nickel. You never get run down and feel I'm tired. You know, Alan King used to have a joke that I loved. He said that he had gone into the hospital for exhaustion. And he said, boy, is that a rich man's disease? You know, you don't see some guy in Pennsylvania been digging coal for 30 years. I'm tired. Can I sit down? Get out of here, you bum. Exhausted, you lazy. Get back there. Here's a shovel. Start digging again. And it's true. I mean, it's a rich man's disease, exhaustion. If you have time to complain, you don't have enough work to do. Let's get to the bottom of this. The next day, with the monologue written, Leno passes time in his Tonight Show dressing room calling fans who have written him letters, usually complaining about one of his jokes. Oh, hi, Nancy. This is Jay Leno. Are most people surprised when they pick up the phone as Jay Leno? I think so. I think they're surprised that, that you take the time to give them a call. Because a lot of times people forget that they wrote, I call one woman and she goes, that's my daughter. She writes to every crackpot. You know, I said, oh, well, thank you very much. We'll just tell it to Jay Leno. Who? Oh. That's interesting, Mr. Leno. But it's hard to get him off the phone, even when Tonight Show executive producer Fred DeCordova stops by with that night's rundown. Bye -bye. Ah, Fred DeCordova is Never here. Mind. I know who I am. Uh, I had uh, Sybil Shepherd and yes. uh, Kenny Loggins notes oh, here. All right. Surprise me by reading them. Oh, yes, I will. that will be as a surprise. As soon as that happens, I'll bring you down some more. Three, Three minutes. <laughs> Even after five years of sitting in for Johnny, Leno is still careful not to offend Carson's staff or audience. And in the process, some people think his humor has lost some of its earlier bite. Some people have said, a few critics, that uh, since you've started doing The Tonight Show, you've become a little bit more bland. Yeah, it's probably true. Also, don't forget I'm guest hosting on someone else's show. You know, it, it might open up a bit more when you, when you go out on your own. One thing Leno plans to tinker with and sharpen up is the political humor, although politicians from Dan Quayle to Bill Clinton find it sharp enough already. Are you a Republican or a Democrat? Uh, I'm neither, actually. <laughs> I'm neither. I, I try to remain uh, a staunch independent, because every time I think I'm a Republican, they do something greedy, and every time I think I'm a Democrat, they do something stupid. It's difficult to imagine two people who are more different than you and Johnny Carson. Everyone says he's extremely remote. Is he, is he remote? Uh, if people say that, maybe he is. I don't know. I can only judge by what I see as a professional sort of relationship that I have with him. And he's always been very gracious. But you don't have that many personal conversations with him? No. No. But, um, I mean, I would feel funny, you know, like I say, hey, what are we doing? I mean, it's a different level economically and socially and, uh, you know, I don't know what I would talk about. Look like a happy crowd. Unlike Johnny, a relaxed Leno goes out and fools around with the audience 30 minutes before showtime. I'm in Omaha next Saturday. Yay! Where are you going to stay? Where am I going to stay? Hopefully with you. I'm going to <laughs> Do you feel a lot of pressure? No, but I don't feel a lot of pressure over anything. I don't really worry about anything. You know, my blood pressure is like zero over zero. Japan says the U.S. has no right to tell Japan what to do. Hey, sure we do. The customer is always right. Most Sunday nights, when we hope most people are home watching television, Leno goes back on the road, even if it's the San Diego freeway. He does a set at the Comedy and Magic Club in Hermosa Beach, just to stay in practice and to try out new material. Are you worried now that you're going to be in Beverly Hills uh, 300 days a year that you're... I'm sure there are people who have bigger problems. <laughs> It's a terrible thing, yeah. Boy, yeah, Big Brother is watching, isn't he? <laughs> Can't make a move without this guy. You, they're unbelievable. They're everywhere, these people. Before we left town, he asked one last favor, something he's always wanted to do. And since he humored us, we humored him. Yes? 60 minutes. Look, uh, I know nothing about the dioxin and the baby for me, understand? Look, those asbestos Dalcon shields are made by a company I sold a long time ago. Come on. Look at that phony meat stamp. Look, this is a private home. You can't come in here. Look, I know nothing about that meat stamp. That's all grade A beef as far as I'm concerned. Hey, you come back here. You can't just walk in.